Hello and welcome to my talk on coronary artery plug characterization from coronary CT angiography scans using deep learning and radiomics-based algorithms. This work was first published at MICAI 2019. Before I go into detail about the approaches we use, I want to briefly introduce the medical background of this work. Due to inflammation of the tissue surrounding the coronary vasculature, plug deposits can aggregate within the vessel walls. These plugs can then narrow the lumen, hence obstructing the blood flow. This can lead to rupture of these plug segments, which leads subsequently to thrombus formation and subsequently to uh, events like stroke or myocardial infection. Or on the other hand, the plug can narrow the vessel in a way that the heart muscle is malperfused and therefore ischemia can lead to sudden cardiac death. In this work, we try to predict the patient management decision or the revascularization decision on a lesion level while having the stenosis degree as a sub-target. To this end, we use a data collection consisting of 95 patients. These patients have in total 345 lesions annotated with its stenosis degree in a binarized fashion, so below and under 50% narrowing, which is the clinically relevant cutoff value. And we also have branch-wise labels on main branch level regarding whether the main branch was revascularized or not. We propagate those revascularization labels to the most severe stenosis in order to get lesion-wise stenosis degree level, uh, labels. And our task here is to classify those lesions um, with a defined start and end point without prior detection of those lesions. And for this end, to this end, we compare a radiomics-based approach, a deep learning-based approach, and a combined approach for this task. First, I want to introduce the terms radiomics and XGBoost. Radiomics stands for a set of shape, intensity, statistics, and texture-based features calculating utilizing a mask of a region of interest. The resulting feature vectors are of a very high dimensionality and need to be further accessed by a subsequent machine learning algorithm. One possible algorithm for this task is XGBoost or Extreme Gradient Boosting. This is a decision tree based algorithm which has the nice property of adding new subtrees in a greedy search manner. So new subtrees are created with a sub feature set and a sub set of the data. By this, the algorithm inherently performs some sort of feature selection, which is a nice property with a high dimensional radiomics feature vector. So the workflow for this algorithm looks like this. First, the lumen segmentation is extracted. Then the radiomics of this lumen segmentation combined with the CT scan are calculated. And then those features get used, get plugged in into the XGBoost classifier for final prediction. For this, approach, there's no need for reformation and sort of resampling. And since it's a decision tree based approach and the features are handcrafted, it's somewhat explainable. However, it's dependent on a prior segmentation and you have to basically brute force with uh, some handcrafted features in order to get a prediction. 
The second approach is based on work of Zreik and others, which utilize a recurrent convolutional neural network for automated detection and classification of coronary artery plug lesions. The starting point for this algorithm is the um, centerline extraction, and from this centerline, a multiplanar reformatted volume stack is interpolated by having orthogonal planes for each centerline point stacked together. This volume stack is then cut into a sequence of overlapping cubes and for each cube features are extracted using a convolutional neural network. And finally, the um, features are analyzed in a sequence-wise manner in order to get a final prediction using a recurrent neural network. The convenient thing about this approach is that it utilizes the structure of the task at hand pretty nicely since a stenosis uh, lesion can be characterized by the change of diameter along the centerline direction. To emphasize this even further, we also transform the volume stack into cylinder coordinates. By this, you have the radial information um, from the center line to the outside as the most prominent. And also we extract 2D features for each single axial plane first and then combine them in a set direction using one times one convolution across the set direction. Therefore, we leverage the information regarding the task at hand pretty nicely, but still this approach is some sort of a black box approach and RNNs are generally known to be hard to train. The final approach is a combination of both the foremost mentioned approaches. So again, the starting point is the MPR volume stack extracted using the center line and the start and end point of the lesion. And again, the lesion is cut into a sequence of overlapping cubes. But now instead of using a convolutional neural network in order to extract the features, we extract radiomic features by also utilizing the vessel segmentation in this area of interest. And those radiomic features then get again plugged into a sequence analysis network, namely using gated recurrent units. By this, we again leverage the information regarding the classification task by using this network architecture. But it's less of a black box approach since the features which are extracted by the radiomics approach are more comprehensive than just having a convolutional neural network. Still, this approach requires a prior segmentation and RNNs are still hard to train. So for the results, for the prediction of a stenosis degree greater than 50%, which is the clinically relevant cutoff value for a severe stenosis, we get the by far best results with our combined approach. This is convenient since the ne network architecture models the task at hand pretty nicely and the stenosis degree itself gets um, approximated quite nicely by having the lumen mask change over time. Um, in this figure, you can see the area under curve, the accuracy and the Matthews correlation coefficient since our task is pretty class imbalanced. For predicting uh, the revascularization decision on a lesion-based level, our combined approach also outperforms the two other approaches by um, slight but significant margin. So to summarize, we compared three different approaches to predict the stenosis degree and the resulting revascularization decision. 
we see that the combination of handcrafted features from the radionics based approach and the recurrent neural network yielded by far the best results by the with the cost of needing a prior segmentation this work did not address uh, detection of plug lesions, which should be part of future work. Thank you for your attention and I'm open for questions in the comments.